All right, so let's talk settings. All right, so in order to get to our settings menu, we're going to go to the middle button. You can see the marker for my mouse where I'm pointing. And now we are going to go down here to settings. So the first one that I want to talk about, this is the one that I always use every time I DJ with a controller with DJ Pro AI. And that is going down here is crossfader cutting mode. I made a short about this going a little bit more into detail, but basically what it does is it allows the crossfader instead of smoothly going left to right, following exactly what the controller is doing, it will snap either to the middle or to the right or to the left. And this makes scratching, doing scratches like the chirp scratch and doing uh, scratch routines like that. It makes it so much easier instead of having to actually move the crossfader all the way. And I recommend that anyone that uses this app with a controller put crossfader cutting mode on. All right. Now, the next setting that I'm going to talk about is going to be over here in general. And then that is going to be a start playback. So when you first put on, when you first start the app, if you never used the app before and didn't change this, and you have start playback on, what it does is as soon as you load up a track, so we'll go over here and we'll load up any track. And it will start playing immediately. This is super annoying because if you go to load up a track on the deck that you're not using, the, tr the track will start playing immediately. And then if you don't have the crossfader off or if you have any type of volume coming out of that deck, then you will instantly hear it and it'll clash and it'll sound terrible. I don't know why they start off the app like that, but they do. So definitely go to your settings, go down here to general, and then switch that off. Do not have start playback on. It is the worst setting, so definitely switch that off. All right, and now since we're in general, let's talk about something else that's important, and that is protect active deck. This one is a lifesaver. So what it does when it's on, and then you try to load a song that's playing, it says right deck is protected. So you have to have two tracks lo loaded, and then a track playing, and then volume coming through for this to be uh, to, for this to work. And it says right deck protected. You are about to load a song onto an active deck. Do you want to proceed? So this helps you from doing one of the worst mistakes as a DJ, and that is ejecting a track that was playing. So the song's playing, everyone's listening to it, having a good time, and then you accidentally change the track on the wrong deck, and then it cuts your, sh and the music cuts out and everyone like is staring at you and it's really embarrassing. This one setting will save you from that ever happen happening. So it says, right deck protected, you are about to load a song into an active deck, do you want to proceed? And now if you want to do that, if that's something that you wanted to do, you just press load. If you don't and it caught your mistake, you just press cancel. So definitely it can't really do any harm having this on. And I think it is a great safety measure to take, especially when you're doing live gigs. So again, that's in settings, general protect active deck. All right. Now the, now, so that's two or three. And now the next one is going to be down here, tempo slider. Now you have the ability to change the range from 8% all the way up to 75%, but usually we don't do that large of beat jumps, but we do some of them, at least when I DJ. So I think 16 is right in the middle. This song on th this right deck is 128. So if we go all the way up, we could go to 148, which is 20 BPM, or we could go to 112. I don't think you're going to need to adjust it more than that. And it also makes using these small sl tempo sliders a lot easier because they're more precise, especially when you're using small controllers like the Reloop Buddy or the Newmark DJ to go to touch, and you might have limited uh, limited tempo slider. So having it all the way at 75 will make it extremely difficult to get a precise beat match. So I recommend keeping it at 16. All right, now we're gonna go. Oh, this one down here, play, pause start time so what this does is if you have it on high let me just put it on to one second 
and then you start the track, it is going to act like a like a real turntable that's building up RPMs and it is going to sound weird. It's going to sound slow and then gradually get up to speed. And I find it really annoying and I don't really know why you would want that. So I just keep it at zero. So I keep the start time at zero and then the stop time. So if you make the stop time high, it's going to sound like like you pulled the power. So this is what it... The only time I will use this feature is if I'm doing a large BPM difference, if I'm going from a high BPM to a low BPM, and it's a good uh, transition trick to get from the large BPM to a lower BPM. But besides that, but if you're not doing any specific DJ trick, I recommend just keeping it off. It gets confusing and it could get super annoying. So I keep it at zero. Sound. All right. Now we're going to sound. I want to go to, hold on one second. Auto gain. This one is super important because DJ Pro AI makes it a little bit difficult to use the gain settings. Normally when DJs are DJing, in order to get both songs when they're at full volume to be the, at the same volume, you could adjust something called the gain. So here is our mixer. So we have our drone. I'm a Nero mix, so let me just go to back to the regular EQ. Low, mids, and highs. And then usually there's another knob on top of it that's the gain. So there's four knobs. But in DJ Pro AI, they just give us these little tiny sliders that are almost impossible to use with our finger. So... By having auto gain on, it keeps us from half. It's one less thing to worry about. Some people would say it's cheating, but it is what it is. Uh, if you're using, if you plan on using DJ Pro AI, just plan on using the auto gain because it's hard to adjust the gain. And a lot of the smaller controllers don't even have a gain knob, and the auto gain works really, really well. All right. So those are the settings that I would recommend using if you're using DJ Pro AI. Let me know in the comments if you guys use any other settings or you don't like the settings I said or you have any specific questions about the app. And if you found value in this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Thank you.